John Glavin was a poor fisherman from the town of Lisgriffin in County Cork. Uh, he and his family, they were on very hard times. They had trouble paying the rent. They had trouble keeping John's little fishing boat in good repair. And they even had trouble putting food on the table. But nevertheless, the Glavin family, they were very kind, very generous. There was not a single person who knocked on their door that was allowed to leave without getting a bite to eat and a sup to drink. And they would always do everything they could to help their neighbours and friends. But one day, a beautiful, gorgeous woman came striding out of the sea. And even though she had come just out of the spray of the salt water, herself, her hair, her clothes were bone dry. As she came and knocked upon the door of the Glavin family. And John's wife, Mary, she answered the door. She invited the woman in, sat her down in a chair by the fire, and gave her a cup of tea to drink and a bite to eat. And the woman, she smiled, and she said to Mary, I thank you for all of your kindness. It's all that I would expect from the Glavin family after everything I've heard. But I haven't come here to receive your kindness. I've heard of how generous you are with the people of the town, even though you have so little for yourselves. And so I have come to bring you a blessing from the other world. I will live here with you if you will have me. And for as long as I live here, your family will prosper. You will never be short of food. John's boat will never sink. And you will never be short of money again. You will be the richest people in the town. But for me to stay here, your family must promise to follow three rules. No one in the family can ever kill a black sheep. The family must never invite the landlord over. And the family must never kill a whale. If any of those three rules are broken, I will leave and I will take my blessing with me. And instead, I will leave you with my curse. If you break any of these rules, your family will become poor and destitute. They'll have less then than they do now. Starving, penniless, homeless. And before long, there will not be a glavin left in Lis Griffin. But John and Mary hearing this, they went aside to discuss it and Mary was saying, Oh, I don't know about this. It sounds very risky to me, very risky. But John said, Asher, well, listen. We mostly eat fish anyway. It's no great hardship not killing a black sheep. I'm sure who in their right mind would want to invite the landlord over anyway? I'm sure have you ever seen a whale in your life? No, neither have I. When would we ever get a chance to kill one? So having talked about it, John and Mary, they went back to the woman from the sea and they said, All right, all right. Your rules, they sound perfectly fair. We'll take your blessing if you'll come live with us. And she did. She stayed in their home for years and years. And... She was as good as her word. John's little fishing boat, which had been patched and repatched over and over and over again, suddenly it was whole 
and shining as if new. It never took on water again, it never sprang a leak. And every time he went out fishing, he came back with nets bulging at the seams with fish. And they always had money to spare, but they never kept this wealth to themselves. Because they were still the same family they had always been. They shared it with the people of Lis Griffin. Anytime anyone was going hungry, the Glavins would provide for them. Anytime anyone was short on their rent, the Glavins would help. And all was going well for the people of Lis Griffin. Until the famine came. Now the great famine, it hit the town of Lis Griffin just as hard as it hit the rest of the country. The Glavins, they did what they could. They used their blessing from the other world to try and provide for the people of the town so that no one would go hungry, that no one would die of starvation, that no one would be left without a home. But even they could only do so much. The more they spent, the less they had. And soon, even with that blessing from the other world, they barely had enough to keep the town going. But one day, John Glavin, he was out fishing on the sea. And not too far away, he saw a whale. And seeing that huge creature in the sea, he remembered his promise to the woman. The woman of the other world. But he also remembered the people of the town, the starving children, the frightened mothers. And so, he rode closer to the well, and he pulled a knife from the bottom of the boat. He stabbed it into the back of that huge leviathan. He carved out a chunk of its flesh. And soon after, the creature died. It washed up on the shore at Lis Griffin. And he gathered people of the town to come and take its meat, knowing that they could live for weeks off of this. But the woman of the sea, she came to the beach, and seeing the whale lying dead, she fell to her knees, and she began to cry. This whale, this whale was my brother. Who was it? Who was it in this town that killed this whale? Who did it? Who killed my brother? And with a heavy heart, John Glavin stepped forward and he said, It was I that killed your brother. I'm sorry. I know. I have broken one of the rules you laid upon my family. But I had to think of the rest of the town. We can live for weeks off this. I know now that I have earned your curse for my family. But I had to make the right decision for the town. And the woman of the sea with tears still streaming down her face. She pulled a bell from her pocket, and when she rang it, a huge white horse came galloping out of the ocean. She climbed upon its back and rode back to her world deep under the sea where she had come from. She brought her blessing away with her, and her curse landed on the Glavin family. 
they were poor once more. Poorer than they had ever been. Soon homeless and hungry. And before ten years had passed, there was not a glavin left alive in the town of Lisgriffin. And there still is not today.